Hi guys. Alright, another quick video. Um, basically just looking at DIY solar panel installation. Um, I've done two here. Uh, to be honest, I'm not an electrician, but I do know what I'm doing. Um, if you're not competent on the electric side of things, then I probably wouldn't advise connecting it up yourself. Uh, I will not show you how to do it uh, because if you're not a competent person on this then I don't want to be uh, the one that gets you uh, shocked and possibly into hospital. So uh, but what I will have a look at today is the small installation uh, and whether it's worthwhile. Having done two here I put one on the garage um, to start off with mainly because it was easier access to the roof um, rather than doing it on the house and it was just a small cheap setup um, it was the first time I'd done anything like this so I wanted to know whether A I could do it and B whether it was worthwhile doing it on a bigger scale um, I didn't actually know anybody with solar panels so it's not something I could go and uh, have a look at easily um, the one on the garage didn't work out entirely as I originally planned because I didn't fully understand the setup um, but I put up a one kilowatt system on the garage and buying the panels and everything else second hand um, I managed to do it all for I think it was just over 600 quid um, but even with that one kilowatt system, it's definitely worthwhile. Uh, we ran this small system for six months or so before I went and put the bigger system on the house. Uh, and yeah, it's it made a difference. I uh, immediately saw some of the bills coming down. Um, and to be honest, the system that's on here isn't really pointing in the right direction either. Um, so if you've got a, a small system that actually points the right way, you'll get even more benefit from it. Um, but for the outlay and for the time it takes to fit it, it's definitely worthwhile. Uh, we have an electric car here. Um, so basically just anything you can get for free is worthwhile. Um, but while the sun's out, if you've got your dishwasher on, washing machine on, anything like that, you know, it even contributes to boiling the kettle through the day. Um, yeah, it's it definitely makes a difference. Um, obviously, everybody's going to be different with their usage. Um, the wife works from home, so that one kilowatt powered the telly, charging a laptop, having the printer on, anything like that, and then like I say having the oven on, kettle on, microwave, slow cooker, anything like that, it all contributes to the running of them things. Um, so if you're not confident in putting a, a big system up, or you don't have the money to put a big system up, like I said, a few hundred pound, you can get yourself a small second hand uh, system um, that's worthwhile. What I'll do, I'll show you a couple of bits that I found out along the way uh, if you're new to this like I was um, one of them is the inverter uh, I didn't fully understand the fact that it needed a certain amount of voltage to operate the inverter um, because we have a house on one side the south side um, which caused shade to one part of the garage I decided I'll I wouldn't put all the panels on there. Uh, I just put one panel on that side where it gets the sun, and the other three panels are uh, on the west side. I was hoping I could put one panel into one input and the other three panels into the other input, and that's not how it works um, because they don't meet the minimum voltage. Um, I've had to put them all into one. So if one panel starts going into shade, that does affect the input for the rest of them. Um, 
and also I went for some cheaper mounting brackets uh, for the one on the garage. Um, don't do it. Uh, get the proper rails, fit them properly. Um, I ended up with leaks. Um, panels didn't sit too good, uh, so I've had to do some messing about with that. I've still got the cheap brackets in place, so they do work. Um, but it's not worth it. You may as well spend a little bit extra, get the proper brackets, proper rails, and do it properly. Um, I'll show you those brackets, um, and we'll have a look at the inverter that I've got. Uh, but like I say, for the outlay, have a look at it. If you can do it, it doesn't even have to be properly south-facing. Um, we get the benefit, even in the direction we've got it, um, for this panel. So, yeah, let's have a look and uh, I'll talk you quickly through it. Follow me. Right, what we have here is the display. Uh, ignore the date and the time, I've never worked out how to uh, change that. Uh, but it's 10 o'clock in the morning, obviously the sun's nowhere near in the right direction for, the, uh, for what we've got uh, on this particular setup. But already we're showing 200 watts being uh, being produced from this system. Um, this is a 3.2 kilowatt inverter. Um, they're quite heavy. Make sure when you buy one, it comes with a bracket, um, and they are just fitted to the wall with one bracket that it hangs off. Although this has two inputs, um, like I say, you do need a minimum voltage to make them work. So, although we've got four panels pointing two different directions, they are connected together. And then that just goes out into a switch then into the uh, into the fuse board. That's just the fuse board I've fitted into the garage. Um, let's have a look, where is it? So yeah, we've got uh, a solar input one, and that just feeds directly into the uh, into the grid. And if you've got a uh, a meter, it will actually show you how much you're making or how much really that you're saving. Um, anything that you make on this, I will. Uh, point out goes to waste um, I'll discuss that in a second but yeah I paid I think it was about 150 quid uh, for the second hand inverter um, like I say easy to fit easy to set up uh, and if you know what you're doing easy to wire into the uh, into the system right now I've reminded myself, um, I will just say, because you're fitting these panels yourself, um, and let's be honest, it's not a, a massive system, um, you will not have the MCS certificate, which allows you to get paid for any excess electric that you make and put back into the grid. Um, so if you use 500 watts an hour out of the I don't know, we'll say you're making 800 watts an hour at the time, that extra 300 watts goes back into the grid um, and they get that electric for free. Um, you're not talking huge amounts and to be honest, what you get paid per kilowatt anyway for what you make is not a lot. Um, so yeah, whatever you don't use, you lose. Um, but it's not a great disadvantage even with the system we've got here on the roof of the house um, it, it wasn't worth me for what I paid 
for the parts and doing it myself. It wasn't worth me while paying for a company to come out and fit it for me to get the certificate because the excess that I make wouldn't, it would take a lot of years to make up the, uh, the difference. Um, all in with the garage and the house with the van hire for picking stuff up and everything else came to 3000 um, so if you can do it yourself it's definitely worthwhile uh, but obviously as I say this video is for the uh, smaller system um, and yeah it, it's not worth messing about trying to get a certificate um, for the excess that you will lose into the grid um, but yeah we'll, uh, we'll carry on looking There we are, it's now one o'clock in the afternoon and it's varying between sort of 6.70 odd to 7.10 uh, In the ideal conditions it will go up to its maximum one kilowatt uh, which is the uh, solar panels I've got up there uh, but like I say these aren't pointing in the, uh, in the right direction so it hits its peak uh, only for short periods of time. Right. What you see here is the kit that I used to fit the solar panels to the garage. Um, plus you get a, a screw as well. That's the bracket that fits onto the tile. Um, I'll go and show you on the roof in a moment. But basically you locate the joist, drill through the tile, little rubber seal goes on there that attaches and your solar panel is connected with a clamp if you do go down this route and I wouldn't recommend it is when you put the hole in the tile make sure you put some extra sealant in that hole because this does leak The ones I've used for the house are these brackets. These fit under the tiles directly to the joist and the tile slides back over. Uh, these are a lot better, a lot sturdier and uh, less prone to leakage. Right, just up on the garage roof. These are the panels we've got and these are the fixings. Like I say, these are not the ones I'd recommend, but they do work. These panels have been up here a couple of years now, been through a couple of the storms, had no issues. Cables are nice and easy to clip together. Maintenance free. So there you are. So if you're thinking about it, get on and do it. It'll save you in the long run. We'll catch you on the next video.